Hello and welcome to this CAD Image PLM webinar where we're looking at the view and markup tool in Solid Edge. The object of the exercise for this session is to take a practical look at the view and markup tool in terms of what it does, how it does it, why we might want to use it uh, and more. The view markup tool uh, delivered with Solid Edge is designed uh, to be used as a collaboration tool so you can convey ideas between users, you can use it to, uh, for uh, markup, uh, for approvals, uh, getting feedback on designs and content. So it's all about sharing information and it also can be used to help protect our intellectual property as well. Before we have a look at it in a little bit more detail, what can Solid Edge deliver perhaps without using uh, View and Markup? What tools are available? Well, this session is all really about collaborating, about sharing information. So if you have a Solid Edge file open, in this case we'll open up a drawing file, then typically for drawing files we can use the Save As operation and save this file out as a PDF. We could then attach that to, to an email and send it to a user. They can then open the PDF file straight up in Adobe Reader and they can see what the file looks like. If it's slightly more complicated, so there's outside of the uh, the 2D capability, perhaps there is a 3D file that we'd like to use. Let's have a look at the assembly file from that drawing. If I want to be able to uh, share this with somebody without having to deliver the solid edge files themselves to the user, again we could use save as, and there is now a 3D PDF operate option available to us. We'll overwrite the uh, the original PDF we just created. I can close this file. Let's just collapse Solid Edge down. So there's the PDF we've just signed up, minimally larger than the original uh, PDF we created of just the 2D drawing. And if we open up this file, so again, I could attach this as an email to somebody. Clearly, we can see we can rotate it around, but there's more available to us. If we have a look at the bookmark, it's on the left hand side. You can rotate the model around to some standard views. You can also expand the model tree and switch off components. You can also select components and use the shortcuts to show and hide or isolate individual views. So that may be useful. And again, there's no, there's no intrinsic uh, measurements available to us. It's just the, uh, the solid model that, uh, that can be investigated. So that's what Solid Edge can deliver for, for solid models, 3D PDFs as well. But what what, it, what happens if we want more? If we need more and uh, need more, then that's where uh, view and markup comes in. So let's have a look at, it, at perhaps opening the original drawing into the view and markup tool. So here it's easiest to uh, to access the view and markup command or uh, or application from uh, from Windows. So we'll open it up. Across the top, we have uh, some standard tabs. So we'll have a look progressively at some of these as we go through. <clears throat> and at the moment, uh, the view markup tool is just capturing uh, this, this drawing and it saves it into, or it can save it into its own file format. So in this case, it uses uh, a .pcf file, which is a package collaboration file. <clears throat> but it does mean that I can open up more than just this drawing. So if we decide that I want to go ahead and, and perhaps add the assembly file as well, then we can open that and it attaches it or adds it to this existing PCF file. So we can have a number of different file formats included in the same PCF file that I can then send to somebody. Now, in order to be able to open the PCF file, you will need a viewer or a reader of some description. There are a couple of, that are delivered by Siemens. If the user already has, uh, View and Markup has a copy of Solid Edge, then clearly they can open the file up into View and Markup. They can also open it up into the Solid Edge Viewer, which is free to download. And then there's a further viewer called Express Review, which will allow you to open up the PCF file as well. And one of the advantages here is that I don't have to supply the recipient the actual Solid Edge files. Solid Edge Viewer will allow you to open Solid Edge files, Express Review, which I'll show you a little bit later on only requires a PCF file. So let's go and have a look at the drawing. Let's go back to the drawing and have a look at some of the markup tools. We have a panel on the left hand side that can show us markups, can show us PMI information and also a number of paths as well. The key ones really are the markup groups, PMI and the overall assembly tree. 
<coughs> so we'll add perhaps a new group. A couple of different ways of approaching markups. You can add a new group, or in this case, actually, because there are no markups available at all, then we'll go straight to the markup group. I'll pick up the rectangle tool, and there's information missing from this uh, from this drawing. And I'm going to highlight the relevant columns that have got the information missing, <coughs> and we can type in some information and send this file off to uh, to somebody to get those fixed. The format, uh, in terms of uh, things like uh, colours and styles and fonts can all be controlled through the preferences. So if I click on the 2D markup preference button there, it'll bring me up a panel where I can define exactly how one lines, etc. to appear. I'm going to add some text to this, so we'll run the text tool and add We'll add a note to the drawing. Perhaps we'll also add a, add a couple of leader lines as well. So there's a arrow that goes here. Double click finishes the arrow, and then we can save that PCF file. And it's captured. It's just capturing the information. So the original uh, model files uh, and uh, and the markup information as well. And you can see on the left hand side here in the columns that there are markups available in the drawing but none in the assembly as yet. So if we open up the markup group, I can click on the markups or markup or markups that have been listed there and we can show them. Otherwise we can go back and not show them. So you can switch them on and off. Let's have a look at the, uh, the assembly and see what we can do with that. <clears throat> so if I need to add markups, what I might want to do here is just separate and out a number of different bits of information. So I want to put a section on here, put in some measurements, and also mark something up. I want to run those as separate. I don't want to combine all that information into one into one markup. So we'll do a new group, perhaps for this particular markup, this particular uh, model file. We'll do a section on this one, perhaps. In this case, we'll create a new section. It pops up with a uh, position um, toolbar where you can define the plane that you want to use, and then you can use a slider bar to reposition that plane as it runs through the model. So if we apply the section, <clears throat> then, uh, then we can also define exactly what it is that we want done with that section. Do I want to chop off the front of the model, the back of the model, or do I just want a kind of thin section through the model? In this case, I just want to remove material from the front. It fades out the model, but that's purely down to the, again, the preferences that I've got set up here. So we can open up those preferences, number of tabs here, but if I turn off the shading, and it chops them front of the model off, but I just want to show that so you get an idea of what the rest of the model looks like and you can still see into the model. And you can create multiple sections <coughs> rather than just creating one. So it works a little bit more, it, it, a little bit more functionality there compared to, uh, to the clipping planes, for example, uh, in Solid Edge. So that's the, uh, that's the first of the markups that we've got for our assembly. If we go back to our original model, so just click on the, uh, the header, the, the, then we can toggle between whether or not we, we're looking at the markups or, or just the original model. Let's add a new group. I want to add in some measurements here, perhaps. In this case, I would like to be able to work out, I want some uh, volume information uh, and overall uh, <coughs> width of the model or length of the model. Some maximum dimensions and a couple of other bits as well. So, in this case, uh, I want to be able to measure a part, perhaps, and it's a single a single part. No, I want to be able to measure. I just want some information on the handle, and it gives us the name of the part, and it gives us the area and some volume information as well. Perhaps I want to be able to measure between, or just want to be able to measure or extract information from the edge of the model. I just need the diameter, the outer diameter here, for example. And we'll just move the circle and it gives us a radius <coughs> and also perhaps we want an overall length so I need a double measurement that will run between a couple of surfaces so we'll pick up the front surface and the back surface that will give us an overall width for the model as well so that's got some measurements onto the model and again perhaps we'll just go back to the original model and we want to go ahead and run a quick markup here as well. So again, there's some preferences that we can use to define the fonts, etc. In this case, I want to be able to just run a quick text block and we're going to do um, check strength. And we'll 
I'll just put a pointer in there to run to the handle. So now we have a number of markups. This particular one, actually, we'll just remove that one from the group, from the uh, the markup group section, notes, and uh, and markups as well. So we could save this PCF file. <clears throat> if I'm going to use this to help, say, collaborate with somebody, then you can define exactly what the save tool will do in terms of giving the recipient access to what I've done in, the, uh, in terms of the tools that they have um, they have available to them. So there's some security options here that you can use to define exactly what the PCF file can contain. So it can almost just contain what you've seen and what you see in a in a PDF, but you can activate some of the tools um, so the user can do a little bit more than just that. So let's have a look at, um, so there's the PCF file that we just created. It's got the markups for the drawing and the assembly in it. If we copy that and we go to a an external machine, this particular machine does not have Solid Edge on it, but it does have this Express Review tool. So we'll drag and drop and fire up Express Review and just see what we can do with this file. So because the save options I've got enable all of the markup and measure tools, then we can see in, in the drawing here, nothing's uh, being displayed at the moment, but it does say that I have markups available to me for the drawing and the assembly. So let's go to the markup uh, tab. All right, so there are missing properties there. Maybe I've run off and you know, I've got access to the file, so I'm gonna make changes to them. I can go back to the markup tool, add some text, and um, and just, uh, just uh, add in my own notes to this. So. Um, So there we've got our own comment that's gone on the, on the drawing. If we go back to the assembly, then again, we've got the different markup groups that we can have a look at. So if I'm just interested in perhaps returning the information that I've just added to the drawing, we can save this file. I'm gonna save it again. What do I want? Permissions options. If I was forwarding this on to somebody, these permission options that pop up in Express Review, allow me to define exactly what the recipient will be able to do. So will they be able to do some sectioning, measurements, etc. Maybe I just want to turn off the ability to do any measurements and sectioning, but yeah, they can forward it, they can print it, and they can mark it up. If you want to, you can add in a password protection here as well, which I could have done from view and markup. So the file is then saved. So we could take a copy of this, send it back to our original close it and then if we open the file up in view and markup then we can take a look at, uh, at the at the responses to our original markups that we've just performed on the other machine so here's the drawing here's the markup group let's go to the drawing and there's the markup group and there's, if we expand it out, there's the response. Okay, so the comments have been added. So as a collaboration tool, very useful. We can add our own notes. So you do have the, the capability of defining exactly what it is the recipient can do with these files. You can turn these commands on and off. If you don't want anybody else to be able to do any measurements, you just want to be, just want them to be able to label uh, the model files, then you can switch off these tools for the recipient of the file. <clears throat> so the view markup tool delivers that red line markup capability the, you can investigate the model using some of the measurement tools you have the section tools as well you can utilize PMI that's not something that we had a look at but let's just have a quick look at it now so if you do have a solid edge model that's already open and, it, and this, this particular one has got uh, some uh, some PMI dimensions on it it's a synchronous model if I go to the tools tab I can also open files directly into view and markup from solid edge so from the tools tab, select the view and markup tool. It's 
if there's no view, if there's no file open in viewer markup it will create a new PCF if there is one open it will just attach it to the existing PCF file we can expand out and you can see we can switch on uh, the PMI dimensions and again if I need to I can individually go and delete some of these perhaps if I don't want the user or recipient to receive all of the dimensions or we can decide to delete a lot if we don't want any of them to appear in the list. So there's a sliding scale of collaboration. So we looked at the first couple of, uh, of uh, bullet points there, looking at PDS, looking at the view and markup tool. You can take this a step further, so you can look at managed documents in terms of uh, using things like uh, SolidEdge uh, for SharePoint, uh, Team Center, uh, Rapid Start, and, uh, and Full Blown Team Center. And some of the advantages that those tools can give you is the is the ability to create uh, PDFs automatically as part of a workflow. So if you're releasing documentation. You can get uh, you can get Team Center to, to create PDFs for you. Uh, you can also uh, manage things like the the markup process as well. So all of that can be communicated between users using Team Center. They get notifications. They get tasked with doing things, checking processes, etc. All of that information, all of those processes can be managed rather than just being left to the individual user to manage themselves. So I don't. I don't have to create PCFs manually myself, I don't have to attach them to emails myself, they can all be pushed into a workflow uh, and, uh, and, and actioned that way rather than doing everything manually. So hopefully that's given you an idea of what the View and Markup tool can do, the, some of the collaboration tools that already come with Solid Edge. So we looked at what it does, number of capabilities, measuring, marking up, sectioning typically, We've seen how they work, why we should use it. Well, it's just a collaboration tool. If you do have any questions, so hopefully you've, you've found this session uh, of use. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Thank you.